Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be drawing the graph of the function y equals x squared by hand. Now normally as a teacher, graphing by hand is not something I assign very often. Uh, because of the proliferation of graphing calculators like, calculators like the TI-84 we use for this class, or the Desmos online graphing calculator, which is great price point at free, uh, there are lots of places where you can draw a super accurate graph with minimal effort. So it's not actually the production of the graphs that I'm interested in. Our end product, that graph that we'll end up with, that's not the focus here. The focus is rather the skills needed to draw that graph mean that you have to understand in a very deep way what's going on inside the function. So I'm asking you to draw these by hand, not because it's important to be able to have that graph. We can get the graph other ways. But it is important to have the knowledge of where that graph comes from. And so what we're going to do before we really dive into the graph is we're going to explore this idea, as I mentioned in the previous video, about y equals x squared being what's called a parent function. And let's look at some of the parent functions that we've seen before. Here we see the parent function for our group of functions that's called linear functions. Remember, linear functions are first-degree polynomials, and when you graph them, you get a straight line. So by taking this parent function, y equals x, which is about the simplest line I can have, I can modify that by changing the slope or changing the y-intercept to change this into just about any line I want to. And that's what makes it the parent function, is that a change to that can create any other function I want. We can also look at a parent function for exponentials. So in this case, we have y equals 2 raised to the x power. We see that characteristic banana-shaped curve for an exponential. And we can change this by either changing the base or adding or subtracting some number to lift it up or down. Uh, or we can add or subtract some number to the x to shift it left or right. But this function right here is sort of our home base. It's what I can use to make everything else. So once I start there, all my modifications can lead to all the others, and that's the parent function for that. And right now, let's focus on the parent function for quadratics. y equals x squared. Quadratics. Make sure I can spell. Uh, and so here we see our typical U-shape, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at all those important features that we talked about in the last video for this one to see if that can help us graph it. So here are the key properties of y equals x squared. Memorize these. They're worth it. So the vertex of y equals x squared is always at 0, 0, the origin, the starting point. And interestingly enough, if we think about the y-intercept, where does it cross the y-axis? At 0. So that vertex is the y-intercept as well. Well, where does it touch the x-axis? Well, at the vertex, it only has one root at 0, 0. So the vertex, y-intercept, and root are all at 0, 0 at the origin. So you can see why we call this the simplest quadratic possible. And the vertex for this is a minimum that's important to know because we want to know the graph of y equals x squared opens upward. It's u-shaped. And so now that we have that, we know where the vertex y-intercept at root is. Let's graph this thing. So the first way we're going to graph it is by using the equation. So in order to graph a quadratic function, we got to have at least three points. Remember, for a line, I just need two points and I connect them. Um, for a quadratic, I want at least three points, and I want at least one of them to be the vertex. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a chart with x values and y values, except we know what the y value is supposed to be. It's supposed to be x squared. And so here what I can do is I can pick any three x values I want and figure out what the y value has got to be. Um, so let me pick three very simple ones. Negative 1, 0, and 1. 
So to find the y value, all I do is take the x value, negative 1, and square it. So negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And so that's one of the points on my graph, and I just plot that point, negative 1, 1. For 0, I take that x value, and I put it in right there. 0 squared is 0. So another point on the graph is 0, 0. Well, hey, we knew that. That was the vertex. Of course that's going to be on there. We can also substitute in 1. 1 squared is 1. And so I now have three points. The vertex is one of those points. And that's enough for me to sketch out what this is supposed to look like. And I apologize. Sketching these out on a computer is no simple task. I'm not even good at writing on this, let alone drawing on it. Uh, but you should end up with a U-shaped graph. Note that it does have to be U-shaped. It flattens out. It's not a V. So it flattens out there at the bottom and continues on upward. Now, any three points will do as long as one of them is the vertex. And we know what the vertex is. It's 0, 0. But it turns out we can also use the axis of symmetry to be very, very helpful here. What if instead of doing this, I ask what 2 was? So I put 2 in there. 2 squared is 4. So now I end up with these points right here. 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 4. I know my axis of symmetry runs straight up and down through the vertex, just like that. Well, look at this point. This point is just one space away from the axis of symmetry. So if I look one space away over there, there's got to be a point there. That's what the axis of symmetry means. Up here, this is two places away. So if I go two places away on the other side, there'll be a point right there. So anytime I have a point on one side of the axis of symmetry, I automatically know there's a corresponding point on the other side. So I can say negative 1 is going to be at 1, and negative 2 is going to be at 4. So I get those points kind of for free. Now I have 5 points. I can most definitely graph this thing, so even with my terrible computer drawing skills. That well, Hold your head just right and squint your eyes, and you can maybe see a quadratic in there. So that's one way you can do it. Substitute numbers into the equation and graph it. You need at least 3. 5 is probably safest because 5 will give you some proper points to shoot for um, so that you can actually sketch this out. Our final way to graph this is to know what I'm calling the steps, just for lack of a better way to describe it. And the way I want you thinking about this is that our equation is y equals x squared. y represents how much we go up. x represents how much we go out. The amount that we go up is equal to the amount that we go out squared. So if I'm looking at this, I start with my vertex, and because I'm a good student, I memorize that the vertex of y equals x squared is at 0, 0. And now, if I want to go out one place, I know I have to go up one place squared. So I go over 1 up 1 squared. Well, 1 squared is just 1. And I can do that over here. If I go out 1, I have to go up 1 squared, which is also 1. Now this works no matter how far out I want to go. If I want to go out two places from the vertex, notice I'm starting from the vertex every single time. If I go out two places, I need to go up by 2 squared, which is, of course, 4. So I would go over here and go to 2, 4. If I go over 2, I go up 2 squared, which is 4. And by doing this, I can, even though I don't have room on this graph, I know where it would be at 3 as well. If I went over 3, I would go up by 3 squared, which is 9, so my next point, I'd go over 3, and then I'd go up to 9, which would be way off the screen, somewhere up there. So you can use that step to create your points 
And once you have your points, you can graph them. Again, make sure it's a U, not a V. It should be flat down there. And we'll get that nice, well, yours will be a nice parabola. Mine is, it exists. I'll give it that. So two ways to do this. You can build the table. You can know the steps. Uh, for all I care, memorize where those points are. If you can do that for y equals x squared, and you can show me that you can graph this, then you're very much in a good position to talk about this graph more later on. So to recap, this parent function can be modified to make any other function of that type. For the parent function from a quadratic, the vertex, y-intercept, and root are all at 0, 0. And if you're going to graph this, you need at least three points, the vertex and two others. Remember that you can use your axis of symmetry to get some points for free. Never turn down free stuff, huh? All right, good luck with the graphing.